Hi there everyone, welcome back to the third part of this week's video classes, looking at some common applications of what you've been learning over the last couple of months. Um, in this part we're going to look at how to load multiple files. This is something that's going to be really useful if you have big data sets which are chopped up into lots of little files and you want to load them all in one go. So, loading multiple files. This is a common task if you have lots of files in the same format that you want to load all at once. This might be an instrument that creates a new file every day. But the question is, yeah, how do we go about this without having to write one line of code to load in every single file? First, we need to know what files we want to load. The list.files function can really help us with this. This has lots of different options for um, selecting exactly what you want. Um, the main arguments that this function is going to take is going to be the path. So this is going to tell the function which folder to look in. A pattern. So this is going to look at the actual file name and filter out files that you don't want. So maybe you just want to include CSV files, maybe you just want to include files with some particular set of characters in that uniquely identify them from some other files that are in the same folder. We have this full names option. So again, if you need to load something in a different directory than your working directory, you might want to pull a full name so that you can easily load them. And this final argument, which is a really useful one, is the include dirs argument. This is going to tell the function whether it needs to return the directories that the folder is in in the list of file names. This is, again, really useful if you're working in folders which are not directly associated with your current working directory. So let's start off by listing some files in our current directory. If I just use the list.files function and just put the little dot in the path here, this is just going to return every single file in my current working directory. You can see my working directory right now. I've got a zip file, a .log file, a couple of PDFs, and a markdown. I'm going to try and run this function again now, but this time I'm going to put a little bit more information into that path argument. So now I'm going to use the two dots to go up one directory. I'm then going to look inside the data folder. And then I'm going to look inside another folder called packs underscore data. I'm now going to look at the first five files there. And you can see that this returns a long list of text files that are within the PAX data folder. Now if we run this again, this time we're going to pass it the same path argument, but now we're going to look for a pattern in that folder, and also we're going to tell the function to return the full names of each of those text files. In this case we're going to look for files that begin with PAX, We've again got this dot star argument, so this lets any text go in this gap here. And then we've got dot text followed by a dollar sign, so this is telling us that it's going to look for any files that end in dot text. We've now set the full names argument to true, so this is going to return the full name of the file, including all of the directories that it's in. So now if we just print off the top five files, we can see that it's going to give us that full path to each of those files and it's only including files which start with PAX in uppercase and they all end with .txt. So let's go over to our, our studio session and see how that works in practice. So I'm going to start off here, I'm just going to run the list.files function specifying the path as being one folder up from my working directory and then down into the data and packs data folders. You can see now in the environment this has created a object called files. 
it's a vector of characters and it has 114 different file names in there. I can just print out the first five of those so you can see that a little more easily and each of them is packs underscore a number followed by text. We can now go and be a little bit more specific with our list.files function call. I'm going to return the function now. This time I'm going to specify the pattern and specify the full names argument as being true. Now if I just print out those files you can see it's again collecting 114 different file names. It's now giving me the full path to each of those files and they all end with .txt and they all start with PAX. So now that we know the file names, we need a function to load in all of these files. Um, to do this, we're going to use the readr library. Again, the readr library from the tidyverse is going to contain functions to read almost any file format that we're going to be interested in. In this case, we're going to use a read underscore delim function. We're going to specify that our data is tab delimited. Um, if you work on your data set, you may just need to look at that file in a little detail in a text browser just to understand what your delimiter is. And in this case, I'm going to just load the first file in my list. And I'm going to tell it to make its best guess at what the column types are. If I run this function now, you can see that it loads up a big table, almost 10,000 observations in that table, with all the data from the first PAX data file. That's great, but we now need to find a way to load up more than one file at a time. And this is where the map function comes in handy. We can use map to map over our vector of file names and read in all the files in our list of files. Um, the map function comes from the um, per family of functions. We take that map function, we pass it our vector of file names, we pass it the function that we want to map onto each row of the vector, and after we've passed that um, read underscore delim function, remember that we can just add any arguments that we want to pass to that read underscore delim function separated by commas after that file. So again, we're gonna tell it that we want to use the tab as our delimiter, and we're gonna tell it to guess the column types. And then the trick for combining everything into a nice data frame is to pipe in the bind rows function from the dplyr package. This is essentially just going to stick all the rows together. Each time it road, it loads in a data frame from each file. So let's look at how that works in practice in our R session. I'm going to load in the read R library. I'm then going to run our read underscore delim function. Again, we already have the files object up here from before in our environment. I'm just going to pick the first file in that big list to load, specify the delimiter as the tab, get it to automatically guess the column types, run that. Now we see up in our environment we have a new object called data underscore file. It's got 9,411 observations of three different variables. If I click on that, you can see down here, it pops up with a little preview of what that looks like. Three columns, one with the date, and one with some values in. So let's load in the per and dplyr library so that we can load all the files in our big long vector. Paste in that code for loading all the files. So again, we're going to use map. First argument we're going to pass to map is our big long list of files, so 114 files. We're then going to pass our function to read in the data, followed by the arguments that we want to then pass to the read underscore delim function. And the clever little trick, we're just going to pipe in our read bind rows 
function that's going to stick everything together. Hit the return button, and that's going to crunch through and load in all our data. This is going to take a little while. It's 114 files, so it's a lot of data. So it takes a couple of seconds to run. But you can see now we have an object called data underscore packs, and that has over 720,000 observations it loaded in from our 114 files. That would have taken a very long time to load in one at a time. So here you are, this is what you've loaded in. We're just going to look at the head of that file. You can see, just like we saw in the R environment, three columns one with a date in, and the other two with some values in. And using the n row function here, we can see that we've loaded in over 720,000 values. But we don't have to use an existing function to load in our data. We can use our own function. This is going to be really helpful if you have awkwardly formatted files or just operations that you want to do on your data file every single time to streamline that process of loading everything in. So in this case, what I'm going to do is construct a function exactly like we talked about in the first video this week. We have the function function. That's going to take an argument this time. We're going to call that file. And inside that, we're going to have the read underscore dlim function. That's going to take that file argument and load it in exactly the same way as if we were just passing the read underscore dlim function directly to our map function. But this time we're just going to pipe on a few extra things on the end here. So we're going to use mutate to take the date time variable, do some conversion there, and return a formatted date time object. We're going to take these long column names and rename those to be something a little shorter and easier to work with. And finally, we're just going to select those three new columns so that we don't have those original columns in the not so useful formats. And now we can use our function exactly as we used our old function in a nice tidy pipeline. We're going to take the map function, pass a vector of files to it, and now instead of the read underscore dlim function, we have the read underscore packs function that we just created. We're going to use that in exactly the same way pipe that all into the bind rows function. And let's take a look at what we have now using the head function. You can see now we've got a nice little data frame. It's got three nice tidy names in it. It's got a date time variable this time of class date time and two much more nicely named variable columns, each formatted as a double. Let's go back to our, our studio session and just run that. Here's the code to create our function. We run that. See a function now appears up in our environment called read underscore packs. We're going to again take that function, map that onto our vector of files, run that. And you see we now have overwritten that object called data underscore packs. If we just click on that briefly, take a moment to, to open up as it's quite a big data frame. But now we've got a nicely formatted data frame, three columns, nice column names, and easy to work with classes. So that's how to use functions and map and bind rows to load a large number of files and manipulate them into the format that you want to use.